Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot at what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. This is the weekend edition where we interview notable people from the world of real estate investing. Today is no exception. We have an amazing guest. He's a repeat guest. He's none other than Mr. George Ross. George is an icon in the world of New York real estate. At 92 years of age, he's been in business for over 60 years. He's the author of two best-selling books on real estate and negotiation. He taught at the law school at NYU for over 20 years. He was the managing partner in a major law firm in New York, and he's well known for having represented some major families in the New York area, including the Wilpons family that used to own the New York Mets, Goldman and DiLorenzo, that's Saul Goldman, who was Mr. Real Estate in New York before the Trump name became well known, and then of course his role as executive vice president in the Trump organization. He's one of the wisest men I know, and on today's show we're talking about how to make sense out of the inflationary environment that we're in. Listen to my conversation with George Ross. Good evening, George. How are you? Ah, uh, okay. All things considered, I'm fine. Great to have you here again, George. Let's dive right in. One of the things that's certainly making headlines, it's a topic of daily discussion with our lenders and our investors, is the inflationary environment that we seem to be entering. I mean, we've certainly seen it in construction pricing. Lumber prices are almost 4x what they were at this time last year. But it's not just lumber. It's all kinds of construction materials have gone way up. And so it's really a question of how do we underwrite our projects for pricing that will lock only 30 days before the start of construction while you're still trying to get your perform in place, you're getting your lending in place, all the rest, and the ground is shifting beneath your feet. You went through this in the 1980s when we were in an inflationary environment. How did you deal with it then? Because, you know, interest rates were high, inflation was high. Well, you got it, but what you think you're going through now is just, I think, this is pent up buying. That's what it is. There's so much that people weren't building and weren't buying. So now all of a sudden, everybody is making demand that they want product and the prices can go up because the uh, suppliers can get more. But I don't anticipate that this will last that long. I think it'll settle down quite a bit. Now, if you can lock it in, fine. But I think this is, I think it's a blip. I don't think it's anything that's going to last for a, for a long period of time because it wasn't that much construction going on. They didn't have the materials. All of a sudden, now everybody figures that they've got COVID under control. Now's the time to go build. So they all want more product the same period of time. And it's like a supply and demand. If you have a big demand, uh, you're going to get more bigger price. My suggestion is, is, as far as the people are concerned, what's the rush to build? Wait another month, then you probably get a lot better price. You think the fluctuation will be short term, almost yes. month to yes. month? Yes, I would say no more than 60 days. That would be my guess. Interesting. Interesting. I mean, we, certainly if we look at, for example, through 2020, this time last year, lumber prices were $264 per thousand board feet. And then by the middle of September, they were up at 985. And just between the first and second half of September, they dropped by a third. Yeah. And then by November, started to creep back up and we're back up around $1,000 per thousand board feet. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be holding there with futures contracts extending well out into 2022, yeah. which is part of the reason why I think we might be in for a little bit more of a protracted... Well, we're in for more of a look and say it's just, it's, it adds more dollars to your project, but uh, always in inflationary ten, usually you get more for your project, more for what you're building. I think what I'm seeing basically is this, you have a lot of pent up demand that all of a sudden, everybody, it's like you turn on a faucet. When you turn on a faucet, you get a lot of water all at one time. And that's what I basically see. But it's, you know, uh, the cost of materials is, uh, is something you have to live with. So uh, your profit margin may be a slightly less. But meanwhile, I think you're going to have pent-up demand for the product. One of the things that's driving that pent-up demand is there's very little supply in the market. So if you can look at inventory in most communities. Inventories are almost, you know, at really historic lows. I know in my home city. Well, that's good. Nobody bought. No, you, you got to go back up the ladder. So you get the one that's selling it to the consumer can only get it from the, from the wholesale or the supplier. The high, wholesale supplier can only get it for the manufacturer the one, or the, the one that's cutting the limit. They all stopped. Right. So now it's like you start. But the way, the way it starts, you have to fill in the backlog. And that depends on the supplier's I think most of the suppliers that are supplying the building materials, they're up to their rears now in trying to fill in the back orders. But it'll take a while until it filters down. Right. And I guess the 
price that you get at the back end when your project is complete is also a function of supply and demand, and there's very little supply there as well. Exactly right. I think what will happen is that it will disappear, not disappear, but it will be absorbed. So what will happen, what's going on, what you're indicating is occurring, and it's true, is everybody else that's want to build has got the same problem. So if they got the same problem, their prices are going to go higher. Well, if their prices go higher, then, then people are going to have to pay more if they want to move in, and I think they will. They're going to have to live. And it's not so, it's so dramatic. If you figure out what the cost is of lumber and your total cost of the job, it can't be a huge number. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, normally your lumber cost, your framing cost might be between 15 and 17% of a project. Yeah. If the materials double, maybe it's a 7 8% impact on the total cost of construction. Maybe. 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 That's, I don't think it's that high. Right. But, you know, it's, uh, it's where you're building, what you're building, and what's available. I think you shop around, you'll find it's available, especially if you can put off the purchase. If you don't need an immediate delivery, but you can wait a month or so, you get a better price. That's what's been echoed. Some of the larger general contractors that we deal with have echoed that sentiment. They've basically said, don't overreact. And I'm fine with that on a personal level. The difficulty has been making a convincing argument for lenders and investors. I, I can understand that, but let Understand, lenders and investors don't like problems. Mm -hmm. They don't like situations that come up. They like it to be nice and easy, and we just would, this is what it was last month, this is what it was the month before, this is, and now you got a blip. You got a, a uh, because of the COVID and the shortage of the supply and built up demand, you have a, an artificial environment at this time, and that too will disappear. I don't know when, but it certainly will disappear. Things will, things will settle down. Because it's the lack of the supply which is creating the problem. And the reason they didn't lack a supply is why should I be cutting lumber if I can't sell it? So I won't inventory it. Right. Now, once it goes the other way, we're going to start the inventory. It takes a while to get the board feet you need. You can't start it up and say, okay, I've got this. It's not that they have it on hand. It's just that they didn't have the extra to take account of what the pent-up demand is going to be. It's an artificial situation. I'm not minimizing it, but I don't think you can really figure out exactly where it's going. All right. Understood. But I think it'd be a lot clearer in, in 60 days. Although we're kind of getting into peak construction season as well. So, oh, that's it. The tape. It's the cost of construction. Yeah. You know, that's what happens. Anytime you build, things can change. I mean, I, I remember working on one that was working for a client and we were buying steel from. South America, $2 million worth of steel. The guy gave me a bid. He says, it's good for 30 minutes. 30 minutes for $2 million worth of steel? Wow. But that's what it was at that point. That was the market. The inflation was such that he wasn't going to just say, okay, unless you tied it up right away. You have a similar situation taking place now. Short range. What else are we going to talk about? This one we're not going to solve. <laughs> What did you do in that instance? Did you sign right there and then, or did you wait 29 minutes? No, they, basically we signed right then and there. We guaranteed delivery, but but meanwhile, all of a sudden you say, well, I got to put out the $2 million. And not only that, he wants a down payment, you know, the whole bit. All of a sudden you're figuring I got time for my steal, and, and now all of a sudden it's been accelerated. But that was the, that was the market at that time, because the inflation in that, I think it was Brazil, it was 300% a year. Right. Come on, three hundred percent a year. That was what what was driving the market at that time, which was highly erratic. You don't have it anywhere near, and uh, certainly in the United States, and I don't think you have anything here in Canada. Correct. Yeah, for the moment we don't. That's for sure. I mean, right now, interest rates, for example, in Argentina, are thirty eight percent. Yeah, the interest rates are not going to change dramatically. Understand this one thing: the banks have a pot full of money. They haven't made the investments since they pulled back. They stopped making mortgages. And what they're getting and what they're paying out is very little to the investors. And they've got all this money. They want to put it out. Well, you can't put it out at a high interest rate if nobody is going to pay that interest rate. So it's highly competitive. I love my conversations with George. I love the perspective, the maturity of having gone through many market cycles, having seen this before. This is not the 1980s. This is 2021. But still, there's so many parallels. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your weekend.
Go make some great things happen. Talk to you again tomorrow. 